Good day, guys. Today we're going to be installing the latest version of ArcOS to a fresh SD card using only our R36S, not a PC or phone like you normally would. We'll be using the latest version of ArcOS to do this, but it's hard to say if this is possible using your stock OS that came with your R36S. Since they are all slightly different due to there not being a single manufacturer or standard image that's used across all of them. To do this, you will need a few things. The SD card you want to install ArcOS to does need to be compatible in slot two. Not all SD cards are compatible. So if you're following along and you can't detect your SD card in slot two, it's probably not compatible. You'll also need internet access on your R36S. For that, you can either use a USB wireless adapter like I've got here, a USB ethernet adapter, or just USB tethering from a phone. You'll also need a USB keyboard, nothing fancy, just something you can type commands with. Since we only have a single OTG port on the R36S, you'll also need a USB hub. I'm just using a cheap USB 2 Targus one, nothing fancy. And if your USB hub is type A, you'll also need a type A to type C adapter to connect everything to your R36S. I've connected everything to my USB hub and then the hub into the R36S's OTG port. And I've also inserted the fresh SD card we'll be installing ArcOS to into slot two. So the first thing we wanna do is connect to our network. I'm using USB Wi-Fi, so we'll just go to options and go down to Wi-Fi. Perfect, we connected to the Wi-Fi now, we'll quit out. And I'll zoom in on the screen to make it a little bit easier to see. So from here, go back to the main menu, press start, go down to quit and go down to quit emulation station. Yes, should get a blinking cursor. On our keyboard, we wanna hold down alt and press F2. And we wanna log in using ARC as the username, ARK, and ARK again as the password. This will probably be the biggest hurdle if you're using the stock OS that came with your R36S, as there's no real way of knowing if they've changed the stock login details. Before we do anything, I just wanna make sure we've got internet access. So we'll just do ping 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is Google's DNS server. Have to do pseudo ping, and there is a connection. So we'll press Control C to cancel. We'll do clear to clear the screen. Next, we'll make sure our SD card in slot two was detected. We can just type in lsblk to list block devices and hopefully our SD card shows up. So MMC block zero, the very top one. You can see it says size 60 gig. That is our SD in slot one. The slot one SD should almost always be called block zero. And the one below that is MMC block one. It's around 14 and a half gig. And that will be our SD in slot two, since it is a 16 gig card. We do need to note down MMC block one for later. If only MMC block zero is showing, then most likely your SD card is not supported in slot two. You could still follow along with this video, but you would need to use a USB SD adapter and plug it into the USB hub. If you do go that route, it probably won't show up as MMC block one, instead probably SDA. Next, we wanna make sure we have enough free space on the SD card in slot one. We'll need around 11 gig total free to download and extract the latest version of ArcOS. To find out our free space, we can just type DF space dash H for human readable. Press enter. We wanna look for a ROMs mount. So on the right hand side, it says mounted on slash ROMs. And going left slightly, it says available 50 gig. So that's plenty of free space. If you don't have more than 11 gig free space, then you won't be able to download and extract the image, unfortunately. The only solution there would be to delete some ROMs. If you have somewhere between eight and 11 gig free space, you could potentially download everything onto the SD card in slot two. And then after extracting it on the second SD card, you would move the ArcOS image over to the first SD card. It is a lot easier just making sure you have enough free space on SD1 though. So now we know we have enough free space, we wanna actually download the ArcOS image. This was a little bit trickier than I initially thought. There are a few command line web browsers available like Lynx, Lynx2, Elynx, and W3M, but unfortunately none of them support JavaScript out of the box. Without JavaScript, we can't download from Google Drive, Mediafire, or Mega Upload, and the direct GitHub links don't actually load. So the workaround for that is to either manually type in the very, very long GitHub download link, which you will have to find on a different device, or what I found way easier was just using a link shortener. I tried a few free different link shorteners, and the one that I found that works best is Rebrandly. I ended up creating a free account and created two links pointing directly to the ArcOS download on GitHub. It is split into two parts, part 001 and 002, so you do need to download both. It's worth mentioning that Rebrandly does collect statistics on people that use the link. Unfortunately, there was no way for me to disable this, and it looks like all it collects is your country and the browser used. I have no interest in using any of that information, but I just thought I would mention it. If you're not happy with that, on a PC or phone, you can create your own short link where you'll be in charge of all the statistics. Before we start the download, we wanna to navigate to our ROMs folder so it downloads there. So just do CD slash ROMS, and we wanna create a new directory in here. We'll do sudo mkdir, we'll call it downloads. Finally, we'll enter our new downloads folder, CD downloads. It is case sensitive. If we type ls to list all the files inside, it should be empty, and it is. 
So from here, we'll just download our file. We're gonna type in wget space and then our link. It's rebrand.ly slash arcos. It is case sensitive, so make sure there's a capital A, O and S, underscore 731251, which is the build version, dash 001 for part one. Just press enter and it should start downloading. You can see it is downloading from GitHub. It's not going very fast, so it looks like we'll have to come back in around 20 minutes. Unfortunately, while downloading, it has failed. You can see it around 21%, so it didn't get very far. And this does happen a fair bit when downloading larger files from GitHub itself. Not the end of the world, just press up on the keyboard once, and that should bring up the last command entered. Don't press enter yet, press spacebar, and type in dash C for continue. If we press enter now, it should resume at 21%, and it is. You can do this every single time it fails, just make sure there's dash C at the end of the wget command. Once part one's finished downloading, we wanna do the same thing for part two. We just press up on the keyboard, go left slightly, and change 001 to 002. Just press enter, and it should start downloading part two. Once both parts are finished downloading, we'll type in ls just to make sure they're both there, and they are 001, 002. Now we wanna rename both of them. Just type in mv for move, space, and then the first file, so capital A. You can just press tab to autocomplete, and we wanna do file one, so 001, space bar once more, and the new file name. We'll just call it arcos, or lowercase, dot 001. We wanna do the exact same thing for part two. So you can just press up on the keyboard to re-enter the last command. Use the cursor key to change 001 to 002, and at the very end, 001 to 002. Type in ls once more. We should have arcos dot 001, and arcos dot 002, we do. Next, we wanna join and extract the image. Type in 7z space x space arcos dot 001. It should automatically find both parts, join them, and then pull the image out. You can see here, it did detect that it's a split archive. It says type split and volumes two. So it did detect both halves. This can take a little while, so just be patient. If this part fails at a random percent, it's most likely because you don't have enough free space on your SD card. Once it's finished extracting, we'll type ls once more, just to make sure everything's there. And it is arcos multi-panel image. What we have to do now is actually write the image to our SD card. We'll type in ls blk once more just to find our SD card. There it is there. It's the 15 gig or 16 gig SD card, so 14.5, and it's MMC BLK1. It's super important you type the correct name in, as if you accidentally type in something like block zero, you will wipe your SD card in slot one. You don't want to do that. So to write the image to our SD, we want to type in sudo dd bs equals four capital M. That's just the block size, makes it a bit faster. IF is input file equals, and then the image name. So it's this long one here. So capital A, just press tab to autocomplete. Double check it's the correct one. It is, that's right. Make sure there's a space after image, which there is. OF for output file equals slash DEV slash, and then the SD card. So for me, it was MMC BLK1. Triple check you've typed in the correct name. As once again, if you have the wrong device, you will wipe the wrong SD card. Press spacebar, wanna type in status equals progress, space and and space S Y N C. Once you've made sure you definitely have the correct SD card, just press enter. It should start writing the ArcOS image to our SD card in slot two. It is going fairly fast, so that's good. And it looks like it's finished writing. There's no progress bar, but this specific image here stops at around 7.9 gig. So I just use that as a rough guide. That's pretty much it. Our SD card should be ready. We'll shut down ArcOS. So just do sudo shut down space dash H for hard shutdown space now. Should power off. There we go. I'll zoom back out. I'll unplug our USB hub. We don't need it anymore. I'll take out our second SD card that we just wrote to. It's a little bit warm. It's normal. Take out the original SD card. And I'll put the new SD card we just wrote, the 16 gig one, in slot one. And we'll power it on, hopefully it works. We've got the boot logo, that's good. And it looks like it is starting its initial setup. It's a good sign. Everything seems to have worked. It's finished its initial setup and we're in ArcOS now. Everything seems to have worked perfectly. If you're getting a black screen, then you'll just need to change the panel files like you would normally. I have made a video on that in the past, so I'll link that down in the description below. All that's left to do is to copy your games over to your new SD card. It is possible to copy games between the two SD cards directly on the device itself, and I have made a video on that as well in the past, so I'll link that down in the description as well. I think we'll power off, put the original SD card back in, and just delete the ArcOS files that we downloaded since we don't need them anymore. Swap the SD card out, swap back onto the original Samsung 64GB card. Now it's finished booting, so you've got a few options here. 
You can either delete the files using command line, so you just quit emulation station like we did previously and use your keyboard, or you can use the built-in file manager. I think we'll do it that way. Go down to options, go down to 351 files. It should default to the ROMs partition, which it is. We'll go down, find our downloads folder. That's the one we created. Just press Y on it, go down to delete and press A. Double check you have selected the correct folder. So downloads, yep. Press A to confirm. There we go. That's the temp files gone. We can quit out by pressing Y and going down to quit. While this method is a bit more complicated than just using a PC or phone, it just goes to show you can create a fresh install of ArcOS using only your handheld. The SD cards that come with your handheld are usually extremely low quality, and I wouldn't recommend downloading large files to it since there is a high chance of permanently corrupting the card. If you are following along with this guide in the future, and the shortened links are no longer the latest version, which is highly possible, just leave me a comment and I will update the links with the latest version. Alternatively, you can create your own short links. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.